If you do the grocery shopping for your family, you may have noticed this new word, bioengineered, on some of your food labels, or perhaps you've seen this new symbol. But I'm guessing to a average US consumer, it's a bit of a mystery what bioengineered actually means. Now, before we dive into what bioengineered food is, I am curious to hear, have you seen the word bioengineered in the grocery store since this January? And do you know what the term bioengineered actually means? From the perspective of a consumer, I could see how this change to using bioengineered came as quite a surprise. Uh, but from the perspective of food manufacturers or food producers, they actually knew this change was coming for years now. And that's because this law, the National Bioengineered Food Disclosure Law, which I just feel like that's not a smooth name, but this food disclosure law, uh, this was signed in 2016. So food producers knew for years this was coming up and the mandatory compliance date to label, or sorry, to disclose, we'll get into that later, to disclose that your food is uh, bioengineered, the mandatory date to comply was January 1st, 2022. Now the legal definition for bioengineered foods put forth in this new law says that bioengineered foods contain detectable genetic material that could not be derived from conventional breeding. Instead, you have to use certain lab techniques and this genetic material otherwise would not be found in nature. Now, what's maybe not obvious at first is that this definition for bioengineered food is actually very, very specific. It tells you what you must detect via a test, the genetic material, if your food is to be labeled bioengineered. Now compare that to a definition of GMO. Say, let's just use the uh, definition set forth by the non-GMO project. GMOs is actually a much broader term. So GMO refers to any living organism whose genetic material has been artificially manipulated in a lab setting. This can include many different genetic engineering techniques, and it refers to any uh, combination of genes that would have not occurred in nature. And the non-GMO project goes on to specify that GMOs also includes any products or ingredients that are derived from that initial genetically modified organism. Now, I think this difference between what is a GMO and bioengineered food versus what is just a GMO and not bioengineered is quite confusing and abstract. So let me give you a couple of real examples. Let's say we're looking at something like soybean oil or an oil you would cook with in your kitchen. Soybeans as a crop, it's very common that they're genetically modified. So if you use the term GMO, you would say, okay, soybean oil comes from soybeans that were genetically modified. Therefore, the oil is also a GMO. Okay, true. But now remember the definition of bioengineered. It is that you can detect the genetic material of a GMO in the food product. And in the case of soybean oil, this is not true. You would not detect that genetic material because the oil is so refined and it is so processed that by the time you get to something you would sell as soybean oil, it's just really the oil part. There would not be DNA or the soybeans genetic material in that food product, therefore it's not technically bioengineered. Okay, here's another scenario. Say a cow during its lifetime is fed genetically modified alfalfa. Now from the non-GMO project, they would say that that beef from the cow, because it ate GM feed, is considered a GMO, the beef. But from a perspective of bioengineered, because we would not detect the genetic material of the GM alfalfa in the meat of the cow, in that beef, it is not a bioengineered food. It's not bioengineered just because it ate 
genetically modified feed because we cannot find that genetic material in the final food product. Okay, so how can you find out if the food you're eating is bioengineered or contains bioengineered ingredients? Well, the National Bioengineered Food Disclosure Law requires food producers to do one of four things. The first way to disclose this information is simply adding to the food's label either the words contains bioengineered ingredients or this is a bioengineered food and you'll find that right, right by the ingredient statement. Second way you could do this is uh, like I showed earlier there is now a new logo for bioengineered foods and this would also be near the ingredient statement on the food. The third way uh, strikes me as a bit odd, but I guess a food producer can put a QR code on the label. You can scan the QR code with your smartphone and that will direct you to a website and that website will disclose if the food is bioengineered or not. The fourth way is that the food producer can put a phone number on the food packaging. And if you're interested, you can either call or text that phone number and they will give you the information on whether that uh, food is bioengineered or not. It's really these options three and four, having the QR code or the phone number that make this a disclosure law and not a food labeling law. Because having a website or a number to text really just means you don't need the information on the food label or explicitly stated on the food label. You just have to have the information somewhere that is accessible to consumers. And just one note here, they don't have to tell you which specific ingredients are bioengineered. They just have to say yes or no, this is a bioengineered food in general. I think a very fair question to ask is why did lawmakers go with an entirely new and unfamiliar word like bioengineered when really what most of the public would call this is a GMO or a genetically modified organism. And now I do not know the specific answer to this. I did not attend the hearings or make this law, but my first instinct is that by picking a totally new unknown word for the most part is they could ignore sort of all the baggage and emotions and history that the term GMO tends to bring with it. And this also gave them the opportunity to pick an exact definition of what bioengineered means, which like I said earlier, it's a very specific definition they made. It's more specific than the term GMO. So this probably gave them a lot more freedom, a lot more control over exactly what this law was going to be. Now, like most food laws, there is a long list of exemptions. Uh, some might call these loopholes. It depends on your perspective. Uh, let me go over just a couple of these that are pretty important. The first is that they set a threshold level where for each ingredient, you can have actually up to 5% of that ingredient uh, be bioengineered substances. If it's technically unavoidable, maybe there is not an alternative or if it was inadvertently added. Next, any food products that have uh, meat, poultry or eggs listed as the first ingredient actually don't follow this new bioengineered law. That is because these products are regulated by different USDA statutes, so they will not follow this new bioengineering rule. The last thing I want to point out is really uh, these food laws are mostly aimed at large food manufacturers. So a lot of different smaller food producers are exempt from labeling uh, their products bioengineered. These are things like food trucks, uh, restaurants, cafeterias, a lot of these more uh, small businesses, they do not have to follow this bioengineering rule. Now for all the hullabaloo about labeling foods as bioengineered or not labeling them, I just want to point out that the FDA and the National Academy of Sciences have found no proof that bioengineered foods are worse for your health or that they are unsafe. And actually they have a really interesting book on this that I will put a link in the description. And I don't normally say that food law is interesting to read. So I actually mean 
mean this. For the most part, reading about food law is like reading the dictionary. It's not specifically fun, but they look at everything from the prevalence of autism to food allergies to uh, your gut microbiota and if that has been influenced by bioengineered foods. So I hope this is clear. Please let me know in the comments if this was helpful or if something is still a bit of a mystery to you. But otherwise, I will talk to you next time. Bye.